Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Bonsai Movie Crew. I'm the host this week, Karen. And as always, there's Joseph and Eric. Hey. Hi. If you uh, didn't notice, we have a new member. This is Madison. What's up? What's up? <laughs> she's my daughter. Yeah, so... She's, she, she joined the crew. Yeah, she's uh, going to join us for for permanencies. 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 Is that a word? Yeah, it, I made it, it up. It is now, yeah. Oh, okay. I made it up. Yeah, we do that. That's what it's, What's the great thing about being part of the crew? You can make up words. Yep, and it's going to be in the dictionary next week. Our dictionary. Sweet. Yeah, we're, we're working on a bonsai dictionary. <laughs> Yeah, yeah go ahead and write it down. It write it well, down. Permanencies. Permanencies. We're going to put it in the dictionary. I'll come up with the definition later. <laughs> <laughs> come up with the definition later. Uh, yeah, so Sweet. here we are. Um, and uh, news. Go for it, Joseph. News. Joseph's got some fucking news. What you got for us? Uh, I got a few things. Uh, this pen Usually sucks. he doesn't, though. Usually he's like, oh, news? Uh, oh, news? shit, yeah. What? <laughs> Wait a second. I forgot all about what? that part. I do news? <laughs> I actually got a little bit of news this week. Um, had to kind of scrape the bottom of the barrel for it, but... <laughs> uh, let's see here. So, first off, we'll start from the bottom. Um, So, I don't know if anybody saw uh, Chris Rock's stand-up that just aired. I did. Last week, I did, too. I didn't see the whole thing. I saw bits and pieces of I it. I watched the whole damn thing. <laughs> um, so You said you did or you did I did. Um, so, obviously, Will Smith had to come back. And oh, I did not see that. Say He didn't say anything bad or negative. He said that he, he was uh, hurt. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the slap that happened a slap year ago. Down. Yeah, Chris Rock the, finally addressed his yeah, side of things. Yeah, the slap that broke the internet. Um, <laughs> yeah. So at the 94th and uh, Academy Awards last year, when Will Smith got on stage and slapped Chris Rock, um, said Will Smith has had the continued support of his. Okay, so this is what irritates me, and the reason why I wouldn't usually cover this because it's just whatever, but this pisses me off. Uh, Will Smith's Chris Rock slap brought him and Jada Pinkett Smith closer together. Sources say. Oh Jesus! Christ. I'm like, so you're telling me what? so. His wife. His wife, Jada. Jada. So, Will Smith has had the continued support of his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, a year after the Fresh Prince Bel-Air uh, star slapped Chris Rock at the 94th Annual uh, Academy Awards. A source tells E.T. the couple has been on a journey that has made them closer than ever. So, you're telling me this motherfucker got up on stage, slapped somebody, and that made his wife love him more? So he had to go physically harm another man. It sounds like a real healthy relationship is what yeah, you're getting at. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I'm like, dude, so you're telling me that he got up on stage, slapped another man in the face, and humiliated him in front of millions of people, and it made your fucking relationship better? I'm glad you feel better, Will. You know, well, and I'm glad Jada's doing really good. Yeah. The fucking whore. And let's let's be real like, here. I mean, like Chris Rock waited how long to say anything? Yeah, he waited a whole Seriously. year. Seriously, but he I, dude, did not I understand that he was waiting. He wanted a platform like Netflix, sure, a live audience where he could get up there and say it with no editing, sure. So sure. he got up there and said what he had to say. I don't get why he did it, man. But how many people could do that? How many people could buy their time yeah, like that? Exactly, not a lot. Not a word. He didn't say a fucking word. Until now, so he got up there, and if you if you don't understand what we're talking about, get on Netflix, watch his special. Actually, just if you don't even want to watch the special, just go to the end of his special and watch the last fifteen minutes or so. Yeah, Alec actually he goes sent on a, me a fucking rant, dude. Yeah, Alec actually sent me a TikTok. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Will? he's mad. No, Chris, Chris Rock. Rock. Oh, yeah, he's pissed. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's pissed. Sure, he's humiliated him. Sure, because they asked like, "Oh, does it hurt? Did it hurt?" He goes, "It still hurts." Yeah. He goes. And and he said it in a joking manner, but you could tell that it's like in a way that's like he just were they friends? I mean, they weren't really friends, I would say, but they were acquaintances. Well, he had a lot of respect like, for Will yeah, Smith. Yeah, I was gonna say I think then. it was more like Chris Rock really liked Will Smith. Like, yeah, you know, he grew up listening to his music and stuff right. like that. So like, it was one of those deals where it's like you know, don't meet your heroes. I guess you know, <laughs> yeah. like I guess maybe. Well, they're I about mean, the uh, same age. Sure, but know? I mean, it was like you know, he had a lot of 
as I guess a peer or whatever, he listened to his music. He listened to his he, music. You know, he he into, supported him. He, he loved him. You know what I mean? He was into, but then you know, he does this shit. And it just kind of paint, paints Will Smith in a very fucking weak manner, dude. Like, that dude has no balls, if that's the case. And to go and humiliate another man because of your fucking cunt wife really irritates well, me. Well, and for their reaction to Chris Rock's reaction, or Chris Rock's, um, you know, coming out and talking about his side of things, their reaction is to say our relationship is much stronger. Right, right. That's your reaction, right? It, well, he seriously? also said he also said that he was Will Smith did come out and say he was hurt by uh, Chris Rock's um, okay performance so, because so leave it at that though. Why do we need well, to hear about your relationship though? You he, he's not I mean? talking about his relationship. They're just saying that this is what sources have gathered. No. Oh. So, but either way though, dude, like you're you're just rubbing salt in the wound, man. Yeah. And it, it, I I think that. Chris has come out and said what he needed to say. It's time to let the shit go. Yeah. Let it go. Let it be done. Yeah, I agree. Um, so this is another thing. See, apparently the news was just trying to piss me off today. <laughs> so um, so <sighs> this really bugs me because this is the kind of bullshit that, that you get out of celebrities nowadays. Pregnant Ireland Baldwin celebrates with mom Kid Basinger at her strip club baby shower. What? Yes. That shouldn't even be um, in the same what? fucking sentence, dude. <laughs> Strip club baby shower. There's not a comma, a colon, and, no. and nothing? Strip club baby shower. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, no wonder your dad was so fucking ignorant that he didn't check a loaded gun. I don't fucking care, dude. People are stupid. Well, stupid. <laughs> Strip mm. club. What? Nothing. I got nothing for that. Nothing at all. Apparently, he must nothing. be stupid. He gave birth to a stupid ass person. No, I got, I got nothing for that. Like he, he left Kim Basinger at whatever point for like this young chick, and he's a very angry man. So I just think that's karma coming around. Oh, on him? Yeah. Are they trying to get lubed up extra for when the, for when the baby comes out. I mean, that's what I understand. It's like, what the hell, dude? Like, you don't have a baby shower in a strip club. What is no. that? What kind of portrait does that paint for your child i'm just wondering but kim basinger is a Mom, fucking she's where was my i don't like that woman at? anyway well yeah <laughs> showing pictures. well ireland uh, doesn't really seem like she's ready <laughs> to be a mom that? in my opinion Apparently. anyway yeah i don't think most people nowadays i, I don't i don't know what happened necessarily but apparently there was a whole thing between her and selena gomez and ireland started it and it had to do with her dating bieber at one point and Ireland was like really upset about her having dated Bieber way back in the day. And Selena Gomez was a, a, like literally her response was, I'm 30. I don't care about this. Right. <laughs> and that's the best. Uh, that is the yeah. best thing you could say. Yeah. So and like good on you, Selena. Because, yeah, absolutely. Right. Like, but that that's, that's the only girl, reason I knew about it. That's I, also I saw a female who has like Selena Gomez has grown up like tremendously. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, she is a very mature person. Mm -hmm. And. Like, I love, like, Justin Bieber getting all butthurt and, like, oh, I miss her. Stuff. Like, she left you because you're a fucking idiot. He still misses her? I don't know. Does, well, but... he's, he's with Ireland now, so he still misses her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come for me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that woman, that girl is not even attractive either. She's not even attractive. Oh, I... Yeah, Ireland or whatever her name is. All right, so here's another one that decided to get on my nerves a little. <laughs> they all came for you this week, <laughs> they apparently. They did. I was, like, scrolling through, and it was like, what the fuck? You know, what is this? yeah, what is this? I'm like, so, all Piss right, so Joseph everybody, week. everybody knows who Lizzo is, right? Yes. The, the overweight black lady or whatever. Uh, so Lizzo questions Victoria's Secret's new runway show with body inclusive, inclusivity, inclusivity, inclusivity. Inclusivity. Now, a, now I can't, I say, can't it. say it. I could always say it. Now I can't yeah. say it. Thanks, Joseph. Sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> Lizzo questions try. Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret after iconic brand announces the return of its fashion show following a four year hiatus. So, so she's giving them shit for not having fat people in their show? Exactly. I'm a big girl. I don't want to be in it. I just don't, I don't I'll understand. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can do it. So I don't understand. For one, this Lizzo bitch gets on my fucking nerves. I can't yeah. stand her. Because she's all about like, 
um, body. Uh, what are, they, what are they? Yeah, the whole the whole. Uh, I know being what you're proud talking about. Yeah, being proud of that. being fat and all that. Like, okay, here's where I'm. What I'm gonna say about that. It's fine if you are proud of who you are as a person. It's fine if you're proud of being a big person or whatever. If that's who you want to be, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But also understanding that it's not fucking healthy. Right. So if somebody comes to you with a genuine concern, like, hey, you're going to have a heart attack. Hey, I'm worried about you're, you. You're, you're, hey, you're at a high maybe, risk for diabetes. Maybe don't eat that third pizza. Yeah. Like, we're third worried pizza? about you. I'm just throwing out. <laughs> Jesus. We're worried about you, right? Like, if they're coming at you at that yeah. with that kind of intention, uh-huh. maybe listen to exactly. it. They're not coming at you and, and saying... Let's face it, dude. If Lizzo had the chance to be 120 pounds... With a, a voluptuous like right, right ass, now. right now, yeah. she'd be like, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. Like, let's face it. I'm not She's saying... only doing this because it builds a platform for her to stand on so she can sit up here and and, and, and shame everybody else yeah. for being thin. Yes, exactly. There's a big difference. It's it's kind of like the, the, the same thing as, like, you know, where uh, the whole... Disney women, Plus. Like, well, women empowerment, right? So you've got that whole uh, female movement right where it's like oh female power but then in order to give females power they think they have to push men down you know and it's the mm-hmm. same thing with this where it's like oh and, yeah. i'm fat so since you're skinny i don't like you because i'm gonna shame you for it okay and, there's, and, well, there's a difference I, I, between i, I want to express something here because the difference between what she's saying and what actually is is like day and night because what she's saying is they need to include more plus size women in there. And if they want to do that, that's okay. But here's the thing. Those women, those models work their fucking asses off to stay looking like oh, that. Yes. Absolutely. Whereas Lizzo's fat ass here is probably sitting at home eating all the fucking bonbons and drinking all the Bud Light in the fridge. Right. That, that's just saying. That's what I'm getting at is like, if somebody comes at you and they're saying, Hey, I'm concerned for your health, blah, blah, blah. That's different than somebody coming at you and saying, you're a fat bitch, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. bully. there's a difference between bullying and somebody coming at you with worried concern. with concern. Exactly. Yeah. So it's fine to have body positivity, but also bearing in mind that it's not okay to push out into the world, okay, into the world, that it's okay to be 500 pounds. Exactly. Because it's not. It is not okay to be 500 pounds. And don't get me wrong, it's not okay to be fucking 80 pounds either. Yeah. Like that's also very unhealthy. Exactly. So exactly. you know, but all, but at the same time, these girls work hard to be those models to mm-hmm. do that. They Even know plus what they're size doing. Models, they work very hard to stay at a, a certain, certain weight, size. certain size. Yes. You know, and and fit. Lizzo mm-hmm. just needs to shut her fucking mouth. Uh, I do not like that woman at all. I like her song. It's on Just Dance. I don't like her. She it's just it's one of those things dance. where it's like don't. Um, don't put down another class of people just because you want to raise up yours. That's where I get angry. So here's another one that really fucking irritated me. <laughs> All the news today, man. So, um, so Prince that was Har- the headline actually this week. It was piss off Joseph. Piss off Joseph. I seen it. Uh, Joseph so rant. I seen it. <laughs> Prince Harry, Prince Harry, and Meghan Markle's daughter, Lil. I can't even pronounce this kid's name. Lilla, little bit, little bit. I don't know. Uh, Christened during intimate ceremony. If it's intimate, why does everybody know about it? Right. Just saying, Megan and Harry, you keep telling everybody, we just want to be left alone. We want to be normal people. (laughs) Be normal. I see your fucking faces everywhere, dude. (laughs) Everywhere. I am so tired of seeing that ginger fuck's face. Have you ever seen it where like it (laughs) looks like they had like actually they were like wearing masks and like the way they were staring. Yeah, they're yeah, and she she's like, like, dude, she is the most fucking fake looking person I've ever met or seen. I sh- I've never met her because <laughs> if I met her, she might walk away with a black eye. <laughs> well, then she'd look a little more real, That's wouldn't she? Yeah. <laughs> Not so plastic. Not so plastic now, are you, bitch? Tenderize that eye. <laughs> so, <laughs> tenderize that. Eye. So, so uh, blood behind. <laughs> <laughs> she's human after all. <laughs> yeah, she's not a robot or an alien. <laughs> so, um, I'm just so sick of these fucking two, man, because they're like, we just want to be normal. We want to be left alone. But I see your faces everywhere. And you're on some big news channel saying this in front of millions of people. 
Like you're saying that because you want to come off as these innocent, uh, just homely people, and you're not, dude. You're fucking rich. You're royalty, man. Whether well, you were. like it or not. Right. Why would, they were. They can't be lucky. Were, are, they still have the name, man. <laughs> he People still They're refer to him as Prince Harry. No, he, he renounced his yeah. royal, royal now. Uh, his that, brother. The rest yeah. of them? Yeah, the rest, oh. of, them. The rest of them. <laughs> he renounced it. He's not. He was kind of forced. He, 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 no, no, he wouldn't have been. He was a prince. Gotcha. Well, they, they say that uh, she was... I I read somewhere that they were saying racist things about her. Well, and, it wasn't just that. that. Like Harry, before they got married, and I only know this because I watched some documentary about Diana. But there was this whole thing, like when he turned eighteen, about he was trying to renounce it then, and his brother talked uh, talked him out of it because he was trying to renounce it when he turned eighteen because of things that happened with his mom. Yeah, I've heard that. And. His brother talked him out of it, and it's happened about every few years since then where he's tried to renounce it, and he's tried to renounce it, and his brother's always talked him out of it. And then when they got married, the racism stuff came up, and that that was the end. He was done. And it's all fine and good until the until all of this blows over, and he's no longer famous. Then what? Then then Meghan Markle's going to go on and yeah, I mean, find if, the next. If, you know what I mean? Yeah, if he's if he and I think. So she's a he, gold digger? May, he may be okay I with don't it, know. But, I don't know her yeah. personally, but they come off as a couple of fucking douchebags to me, is what they come off as. I don't know. I mean, I don't know about... Like, she does. I don't know enough about him. Like The only thing I've known... I guess I really don't know a lot about him. Yeah, you're that, right. I can't say that about him. Yeah. That's what so, I'm saying is like, you know... He does the, seem like a genuinely nice guy. Yeah. The renouncement, you know, thing that I've... That I do know just from the documentary and the things that I've read gives me kind of a different shade for him but i don't know i mean i don't know him and i don't know right who he is as a person but that's like, i guess you're right there i don't really know him that well yeah or, i've she seen, comes I've off seen that video way, of but... him like and like he he'll goof off with the kids and stuff like that yeah. and that's nice you know that that kind of shows like a down-to-earth kind of mm-hmm. personality and he joined like the military when he didn't have to because he's royalty he did right he did a lot of things he didn't have to do um and that's cool i so, guess I, mean, I guess i'm too hard on him but i i definitely don't fucking you like just her. don't like his face joseph it's okay his face really doesn't bother me <laughs> is either. it is it the redhead thing you it, gotta, no you i don't even care redheads. that he's redhead no, it's not eric's face so. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is <laughs> you nailed it yeah. all right so the last little bit of news i got here uh i don't know if you guys ever saw those images of uh Cara Delevingne or whatever with her, the paparazzi got some uh, image of her where she looked pretty fucking toasty on some drugs and she was outside just acting erratically. Uh, It was pretty, honestly, it was sad and fucking just showed, you know, some, you know, the true side of what, what some people can be, you know, in, in Hollywood, you know. So, um, essentially she was on drugs and apparently it says here that, yeah. Cara Delevingne reveals she entered rehab after concerning 2022 paparazzi photos. I was not okay, she said. The bo- the model and actress said she committed to a 12-step program and that the images of her looked uh, looking disheveled at Los Angeles Van Nuys Airport were a wake-up call. I mean, if you saw the pictures or the video... You would understand. You'd be like, wow, she does really look fucking terrible, and I don't know what she's I doing. I just wonder, though, if she would have done the rehab thing if she hadn't been caught. No, probably that, not. Probably not. You know what I mean? Right. Because obviously she was doing it to begin with. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, so most of the time these guys, it's probably, probably her publicist or something saying, dude, uh, you, you, got, you, you need to help. get into therapy yeah. or into or rehab because... You gotta make this look better. Shot. Yeah, you gotta make it look better. You're fucking... Your, your, your whole drowned. career's yeah. gonna go in the yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. So... But that's all I had for news this week. Did you guys get all the fucking trailers I sent you this week? Yeah, yeah. I'm there was an ass load I of trailers. Almost, I, 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 I almost asked watch. you today, like, yeah. do you have a job? Yeah, right? <laughs> Did you get fired or something? Well, I, every time I get on YouTube, there's like a new trailer. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, you guys just stop responding to my trailers. Oh, I got so busy towards the end of the yeah. day. Like, I was so the I last was slammed. One I didn't get to watch, but the other ones I watched. Uh, that one was called uh, The Tank. It actually looked pretty that good. That one looks all right, yeah. Um, I, I watched that one right movie. before we came. And uh, what's the other one? 
right before that. I've been so busy. Since oh, I the got one with uh, Chris O'Dowd. Um, that one. Oh looks, yeah, the Apple. That TV one looks like one. a heart string puller. I probably won't watch it. Yeah, that's I kind like of what I think. Like, do I want to watch that or do I want to just stay depressed? <laughs> I like Chris <laughs> O'Dowd and all that, but I don't really like uh sad stuff so i probably won't watch he's it. been doing a lot of movies like that lately like he did um <laughs> funny S- enough slumberland like... he was in slumberland oh i love that the, one. Uh, yeah, the yeah. new one on netflix yeah. and he had a sort of um you mean aquaman then what aquaman. no big george prize no it was slumberland i huh? know what you're talking prize. about the aquaman dude oh. no that's not him we're talking about chris oh O'Dell. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I yeah that that was he's aquaman. a he's a funny dude no he was the uncle in the in the show or in the movie. Oh, you're talking yeah, about Yeah, but he, he played that kind of character, like, where he was kind of the heartstring puller, you know what I mean? And, yeah. But I if you haven't seen Slumberland, it's actually a really good movie. I was surprised with it. My my uh, argument for those sad movies and stuff was always, like, I don't know, life's sad enough. Why do I want to make it part of my entertainment? Right. I understand that, yeah. I don't. That's why I haven't watched The Well yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of. I mean, I. I want to watch it, and I want to. I don't. I don't really want to watch it. I don't need to. What? Good on you, Brendan. I just don't. That's need how to. I feel too. I'm, that's exactly where I was going. Like, I like. I love Brendan Fraser. I would love to support him, but I just don't feel the need. Good to on you, watch Brendan. I'm sure you did a wonderful job. I just don't need to see it. Right. Yeah. Because it looks like a very sad movie. Yeah. I don't. I don't need. I don't need sad movies in my life. There's enough sadness in the world. Right. There's enough sadness I've ever. I've dealt with in my life. I don't need it in my entertainment. We don't need yep. to see Brendan Fraser set. People are just yep. focused on depressing people right now. I just, I don't like it. I don't understand people that, that really like depressive stuff. No no offense to them. Uh, good on you if that's what you're into. I just, I, I don't like it. I right. agree. What the hell have you been watching? Um, all right, so now we got to talk about what we've been watching. What about you, Eric? You want to start us yeah, out? Yeah, I didn't watch very much. Okay, but very I, much still means you watch something. I watched Hangover 3. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I recently rewatched you that. You watched thing. Hangover 3? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I watched uh, Vikings. 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 Yeah. You sound like me every week whenever I was watching, like, fucking yeah. It's Always Sunny or something. That's, that's, that's <laughs> like, yeah, I've been watching It's Always Sunny still for, the, like, you that's know, That's the bad thing about Vikings is so much is in it. It's so many seasons. so many episodes. I mean, I'm in season five right now. So, I'm getting there. I'm almost there. <laughs> He's like, I'm trying to get through it. Then uh, once I finish that, I'll probably start up The Last Kingdom and start rewatching all those. Why don't you watch something new? I'm going to watch other things. There's but certain there's the certain last, shows that are like the Last movies, Kingdom's you know? getting ready to have they're another like a warm blanket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, The Last Kingdom's getting ready to have another season come out. Uh, so he's got to rewatch next month. it. So, so I'm rewatching refreshed. all the seasons. And... It's like Madison. She just finished The Walking Dead. She's like, think about rewatching The Walking Dead. I'm like, you I'm just like, finished it. I'm like, that like was the, Scrubs. I could watch Scrubs, yeah, Scrubs over and over and over and over and over and over. Over, 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 over. I watch it once. I'm like, all right, I'm good with that. Oh, no, or I, commu- I, there's so many things. Community, I could watch again. Community I watch over things. and over. I've seen that about 17 times. Nah. I think I Madison's could... watched. She watched. Uh, I wait I, until something's how done. Many times, how many times have you seen um, uh, Once Upon a Time? <laughs> oh, I, cu- I couldn't get into that. <laughs> I can't I could. I got into it whenever I was like probably eight. I tried to. I tried to. I couldn't do it. You yeah. see, people, the reason why we thought it was a good idea to bring Madison on is it's nice having a younger perspective on some of these movies. And For sure. She was doing her own podcast, and it was hard for her to find people to do it, do it with her. And I was already doing, I'm already doing a podcast. She's I'm kind like, of an old soul. She doesn't. Yeah. So you know. she, she, you know, she likes sitting down and watching these movies and stuff. And I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> so it's easy for her to watch them too, because she just it's watches them soul. with me. I didn't say you were old. Yeah, I know. You're, you're, you're not grunting to get up yet, so you're not old yet. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't hurt to walk yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we're all walking yeah. up. You're like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> every step. Oh, Feeling no. like Lizzo. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> what about you joseph what have you been watching um i watched a few things this week um we've been watching box mock you know we got three episodes left um i'm not ready i don't want it to be i don't want it to yet. end either because it's the end of the second season and it just aired I know, which means we have to wait forever for the next one yeah you're dragging it out too i am too i'm, I'm <laughs> savoring the flavor like one episode say. a week that's yeah. what we've been doing that's really all we've been watching too is like one or two episodes a week um we watched uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. 
Um, so that's like my second favorite, and it still holds up. It's still a good movie. I was yeah. happy. Like I love watching the Harry Potter movies. You're like, man, takes me back. This is good shit. Um, been watching Last of Us. Last of Us has one more episode, and for this first season, and it's a really good season so I'm far. I'm really that. happy I'm with it. I'm watching it. Yeah, you don't need to play the game to watch the fucking show. No, no, I, I probably, I probably end up watching it at some point. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. I'm gonna play the game um, first. <laughs> I we watched. Play the game first too. I could care. I have the game, and I still haven't beat it. I'm, I'm like that though. I'll buy a game and then play it halfway through, and then I stop just, playing. I don't it. play games anymore. Really, it's hard. It's hard to keep my attention. Yeah, it is I've a hard been playing game. that Hogwarts Legacy. That's kind of taking up some of my time. So I have that, and I, like I said, I, I just haven't played it in like two weeks. Huh. I want to get back into reading so i probably won't get back into playing games maybe you should read the, the hogwarts reading. books maybe i won't maybe you should no well, if the movies can't hold my attention the books definitely won't i recently <laughs> just read um finance parties of silver eyes the first book i read it again because whenever i was 10 i read it but i don't remember anything from it because yeah, madison's a five nights of freddy's fan so she's excited about it but we're excited for it because it's got matthew lillard in it i'm, <laughs> I'm excited for that too because he was stew and, yeah he was and stew. then he was um shaggy Excited for him. Yep. I have a lot of Stephen I King got, books. I got really excited whenever I figured yeah, out what? who he was A lot of Stephen King too. books. Oh. A lot. How many of them are dads? None. I bought all my own. Thank you. Just make sure steal from dad. <laughs> also, I watched, we watched The Exorcist for her last podcast. If you guys are interested in watching that or listening to her podcast, they're still live. It's uh, live. the Mad Hatchet Horror Hour. There's, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> um, so we watched The Exorcist And uh, that could not hold my attention I kept falling asleep uh-huh. I watched the podcast I hadn't seen it in like since I was a little kid And I'm good. I just I don't, don't like that movie mm-hmm. I'm good <laughs> Go ahead Karen what do you got? <laughs> you I had a cousin that that, I had a cousin that I just, just like There, there was no. a couple of things Like uh, the The trip he was on at the beginning The Pea soup That statue that they show yeah was a statue of pazuzu right and that was supposed to show that there was a background between the two of them there's a lot of things you i got miss. that yeah there's a lot of things you miss because of the i think what they were trying to do i it's boring i'll give you that it's boring because what they were trying to do is they were trying to take the book and transfer it to the movie and not change the media in any way you know and so it transfers very boringly because you can't when you transfer a book to a movie the the media has to change right like you have to take a movie and make it stimulating visually and with dialogue and everything else whereas a book um it's your imagination yeah you can use your imagination you can read the dialogue yourself you can you know all of those things so i think that with the movie they kind of messed up um, the first one with just kind of taking the book and going, here it is. And um, so the first one, it, it kind of falls flat because of that. And then um, also it was the 70s. So a lot of <laughs> a lot of 70s movies, if you go back and watch a lot of 70s horror, um, even, even the Texas Chainsaw Massacre um, kind of has long, drawn out, boring parts to it, right? Except for you know the gory scenes and so, you know right. some of the other things so that's it's it's sort of a victim of the time a victim of the, the and book I know that. and a victim of certain other things are they so, remaking it uh I, I, I think they were going to i haven't heard anything about that in a really long time um there was a new exorcist movie that just came out last year yeah but i don't think it was a huh. it wasn't tied a, to these. yeah it wasn't tied to this one gotcha. so the exorcist is actually the one movie that actually Tur- that's where my fear of poltergeist and demonic possession kind of stemmed from. But then I think exorcism of Emily Rose is what really got me like, oh fuck, fuck that shit. Right? <laughs> because well, I just can't, I can't get it. Well, exorcism it's, it's, of Molly Hartley was the first exorcism movie I'd ever seen. Yeah. Besides The Conjuring and stuff, but yeah, yeah. it was it oh, was man. more a uh, um this one was just more like that you know me up. um because Andrew. Oh yeah. But like, uh, yeah, Andrew looked just like that kid. Yeah. But like, um, more like, um, you know, victim of the time and a victim of the book. And then like, you know, when you guys were doing the podcast, when you said that you didn't understand why he, why they showed him on that trip and stuff, that's why I brought up the statue and gotcha. why I was telling you about it that. was, like, I knew why they were showing us the trip, but it was so long and drawn yeah, out. Yeah. They, and... they, 
they could have done better with transferring it from a book to a movie because I read the book um, when I was young and I saw the movie of course when I was like three and so I don't know um, and of course the, the spider walk that was well, part of the extended mm -hmm. thing that wasn't part of the original release um it just stuff like that. I mean, so it, we did watch the extended version. Mm -hmm. Probably, as I say, it seemed yeah. a lot longer than. Yeah, it was the extended version, and I, there was a few other things, but I don't remember all of them now. No, I'm good. Any demonic possession kind of movies it fucks me up. I'm good. And also, I watched the Chris Rock stand-up special on Netflix, which was actually not too bad. Um, some good classic Chris Rock, and uh, it was good. I liked it. I liked the. Uh, he had some good uh, jokes in there, and he also, uh, like I said, the Will Smith thing at the end was something that really, I think everybody's just been craving to hear. You mm -hmm. know, about everybody's it, so. been wanting to hear his side. Yeah. And so we finally got to hear that, and that alone was worth sitting. It's only an hour-long stand-up <sighs> special, so it was worth waiting and worth sitting through, and um, I liked it. I like Chris Rock, though. I don't think, I think he's a great comedian. Yeah. Um, there's some views that he has that I'm kind of like, I'm not, eh, maybe not so much, but, but you know, but everybody's also entitled to, to their own opinion. So, and I'm okay with that. And I like Chris Rock and I thought it was a good stand up. Yeah. What about you, Madison? What you got? I watch a lot of TV. That's fine. I'm homeschooled. So. You go, go nuts. Okay. I, I finished watching The Walking Dead, not last night, but the la night before last night. So I'm excited about that. I started watching Supernatural. Um, I'm four episodes into that, and then... Is this your first time watching it? Yeah. Good job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can get through it a second time. <laughs> I kind of want to rewatch it. The Walking Dead? But Man? I don't know if I can do it. No, no Supernatural. Supernatural. Oh. Oh. I have, I'm only on... See, I'm still only on Series 11. Oh. I've been trying to watch the goddamn show for like three years. I love that show. Sorry. Go on. <laughs> we were watching Vox Machina, and I watched a little bit of Stranger Things with... Um, Mackenzie, whenever I went to go stay the night at her house. Um, I watched the fourth Harry Potter, which was the Goblet of Fire, and the sixth one. I forget what it's called. Um, Half-Blood Prince? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Half-Blood Prince. And then we watched the Exorcist, Exorcist, and then we watched What We Do in the Shadows. I watched that, a little bit of that with Ada yesterday. And like the, the movie? movie or the show? The show. Oh, I love both. Yeah. Can't go wrong with either. No. I don't, it was funny. <laughs> I finished so. the entire, sure. like season the the show in like a weekend yeah. <laughs> i just so like so i sat there and watched it like i couldn't stop and she was like shit. no it's over and then she looked it up she's like good they're coming out with another season <laughs> yeah, <pretty much. laughs> i don't think it's gonna stop until people stop watching it from what i hear is they're doing a really good job with the show oh so. yeah they are oh it's from amazing. what i saw it was hilarious, i've only seen so. like a few episodes oh so. you gotta get back into that to, yeah. it's hilarious i love I, I love the movie it's so. every bit as funny as the movie yeah every bit yeah the movie was great <laughs> Okay, and then I watched uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly again. Again. We don't need to talk about how many times I've watched that one. I don't think... <laughs> I think we've all watched it a lot because of your brother. Uh-huh. Uh, for me, I, uh, I, I'm i re-watching the IT crowd. <laughs> speaking of Chris O'Dowd. That's what I was, yeah, <laughs> speaking of Chris O'Dowd, um, since we finished Archer, I needed something else to watch. I love like, the IT. I've seen that whole series. Yeah, I needed another 20-minute show, yeah. and I was like, eh! You know, I love the IT crowd. I do too. It's great. Um, I thought then, it was called the IT crowd. No, it's the, it's the IT crowd. They are the IT crowd. Yeah, they, it's kind of it kind of works both ways. Yeah, but, I guess um, it could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The it's because they're computer people, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, yeah, gotcha. it's it's hilarious. Uh, I finished that show that my encounter with evil, the one about people that were like possessed and stuff. Uh, I watched Existence. Uh, I've seen it before. But it was really... Is that the one with Jude Law? Yeah, it's been like a hundred years since yeah. I've seen it. And I'll tell you what, I remember really, really liking it the first time I saw it. This time I was kind of like, meh. I watched it years ago, and I and that was my reaction to it. The first time? Yeah, the first time. I was just like, eh, it was I, okay. I, I watched it It was the more first than time. I thought it would be, you know? Yeah, I watched it the first time and remember kind of like, oh, that was good. And like this time I was like, meh. It was all right. Yeah. Maybe it was because I've already seen it before, so I kind of already knew, like, twists and turns, but I don't know. Uh, I watched The Snowtown Murders, which was really good. Uh, our Joe Bob movie this week was Popcorn, mm -hmm. and uh, we watched The Naked Gun. 
What's Joe Bob? <laughs> Joe Bob. Joe Briggs. Bob is uh, he, the last drive-in on. Charter. Yeah, he's the last drive-in. He's a pretty famous, um, mostly B-rated horror host, and so he hosts these movies. Uh, you watch it, and he gives you little tidbits and tells you a little bit about the movie, background stuff, different things, and he's pretty much drunk the whole time too. Oh, mm. sweet. Not so much anymore. No. Mm-mm. I mean, he still drinks during, but no. Nah. I mean, I don't even remember him being really drunk during the other ones either. He drank, yeah, yeah. but. He always comes off to be very drunk to me. I, it's just, he's just. It's just who, that's who he's he is. He's just Southern. <laughs> just <how> he <laughs> he's Southern. southern. <laughs> but yeah, that was our Joe Bob movie this week, and that's all I got for that. So. Right. Let's talk about the movie. Uh, I guess we got to get into the movie now, which uh, this week was Drive. Um, so Drive was one hour and 40 minutes. It was made in 2011, starring Ryan Gosling as the driver, Carrie Mulligan as Irene, Brian Cranston as Shannon, directed by Nicholas Winding Refn, and written by Hossein Amini. That was the screenplay. And... James Salas, he wrote the book. Um, Would we watch the recommended? Or are you going to do that first? Or? I, we usually do this part, and then oh, we, we do? do the... I don't remember. I never Jesus. remember. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> do we? Hold Here's the second. synopsis, <laughs> and then we'll get into Would We Watch and Recommend, Joseph. Oh, I guess it is intro it's right to the movie. And then yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my <yeah>. God. <laughs> <laughs> what episode is this that we've... Uh, we're, we're, almost, we're working up on we're 30. 30 yeah. 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 Oh, here's a click, and you gotta put it down. I, I gotta put it too. down. <laughs> driver is a skilled Hollywood stuntman who moonlights as a getaway driver for criminals. Though he pro- projects an icy exterior lately, he has been warming up to a pretty neighbor named Irene and her young son Benicio. When Irene's husband gets out of jail, he enlists Driver's help in a million dollar heist. The job goes horribly wrong, and Driver must risk his life to protect Irene and Benicio from the vengeful masterminds behind the robbery. So, Eric, we'll just keep the same thing. Would you watch again, and would you recommend? You know, yeah, I would watch again, and I would recommend it. Okay. Um, where, 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 where can I go with it? Um, uh, that's really all you have to say at this yeah, point. Yeah, that's okay. all you got to say. That's all you yeah, got. That's well, all you got to do. Yeah, yeah well, not, we're not doing the rating yet, so nope. we'll, we'll get to it. No, you're good. How about you, Joseph? How do we do uh, this? <laughs> I think this. I think this time around, I liked it a lot more than I did the first time. You just have to say, would you watch? It I I do. I would. I would watch it again. And yeah, yeah I would totally recommend it. Yeah, one hundred percent. Okay. How about you, Madison? Let's go into more detail. I would watch it again if it was like, <laughs> if I was staying the night at someone's house and they were like, "Hey, what should we watch?" I'd be like, "You guys want to see a cool movie?" Oh, and they if they were like, "Yeah," then I'd be like, "Cool, I know what to watch." Like, but if they said no, I'd be like, "Oh." <laughs> okay. Then let's just watch Sabrina. <laughs> uh, no, but I would definitely watch it again. Not by myself. I don't watch movies by myself. So. Yeah. Yeah. But you'd recommend it to other people. And, okay. Yeah. I, I would watch again and I would recommend. Feel differently about it now, don't you? Man, okay. Let me just. I fucking just, knew it. I was like, listen. I was like, Karen's gonna have the same outcome as me. We're listen. Gonna feel di- differently. I want. I this. want you to read. I want you to read my last. Can you read that? I was. was can, you, can you read it, it? It was wrong the first time. I was wrong the oh, first I time. I was wrong the first. Same here. I was so wrong the first time. Jeremiah, do you hear me? Because I didn't tell him. Oh. I said <laughs> I was wrong the first time I watched this. I was wrong. Uh, I I will say that this movie, the first time I watched it, I I, I just I was couldn't not, get into it. I was not blown away at not, all. Yeah, I was like, okay. But this time I watched it, and I was like, man. I wonder, like, was this I... This movie is really good, actually. Was I on drugs the first time I watched yeah, it? Yeah, I don't know if maybe I just wasn't paying attention enough, or... But, like, whatever the... Like, especially whenever the first, like, initial bit of, like, excitement happens, whenever that girl gets her face blown off. That was yeah. Awesome. I, I, I was like, what the fuck? I had <laughs> this shit just got real gory said, real fast. said, set up, question mark, and I was like, oh, she fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I, um, I... I remember the first time I watched this, thinking it was boring. Mm-hmm. And probably because there wasn't very much dialogue at the beginning. There's not a lot there's of dialogue. But that either. that really doesn't bother me. I just remember coming the, away from this movie and going, "This was boring." 
Yeah. But Back how could day, I have probably, thought that? That's what I'm thinking. Like, how did I watch this before and that's not get into that's it? That's what I'm saying. Like, back, back <laughs> but there, when but you guys were I don't younger. need dialogue. I really don't. Most of the movies that I like, I like because they don't have things that other movies... Yeah, because a lot of it is expressed through the acting. Yeah, like, I like, yeah. I like A Quiet Place because it doesn't have a lot of dialogue. Yeah. I like... A, the eighties score music was kind of like oh a I love off. that I thought it was good I love I actually I, didn't really I liked it I liked even it. even yeah, before cool. I liked this the second time I actually already have the soundtrack like yeah. I love the soundtrack I've lo- I've loved the soundtrack since the first time I seen I, it I didn't think it went well I love the soundtrack I liked it I like the opening scene wherever they first start out he's in the car you know he says you got five minutes that w- you know what you do before and after that window that's all I don't care lot. about exactly so. They get in the car and this just driving was so realistic. Like he drives and like he's got the CB radio and all that stuff. He's listening to him, and he's not giving a shit about what they're talking. Yeah, about he don't give a they, fuck about them mm-hmm. in the back. He's concentrating on what's going on on the road in the sky, and he just knows how to do everything. It's so smart, mm-hmm. so yeah. smart. He and he pulls smart. in. He pulls into that stadium. He yeah. literally just gets out of the car and walks. He yeah. doesn't even give he, a shit that, about what's knew, going on with them. Yep. He just gets out of the car he and walks. He knew that's where he was going. That's why he was playing the game on the Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he yeah, had everything a plan. Timed out just, methodically. Yeah. And that's what made him so good at his job. Yeah. And I love that scene because it really set him up as a character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, yeah. right off the bat, you, oh, learn, yeah. you pretty much learn everything you need to know about him within right, that first yeah. five-minute scene. Yeah. So, from there, he gets into that. And then, like, but whenever he slips that hat on and slips out, I was like, dude, fucking genius. Like, fucking that is, smooth. that is, yeah, smooth. Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah loves this movie so much that so he actually knew a lot of um, trivia before you before I did any mm-hmm. research at all. But he told me this before we started watching the movie because he, he it's kind of like his thing for this movie. Um, so I thought I'd just go ahead and say it. But Jeremiah said that Brian Cranston made up most of his lines for this movie. Um, a lot of his dialogue is completely made up. Because he thought his character needed to talk a lot to make up for the lack of talking on Ryan Gosling's part. That, and I think it fits his character. It does, but there wasn't a lot of dialogue for him in the script. Yeah. But he kind of brought it to the director and said, you know, like, hey, it doesn't really make sense that I don't talk, so I'm just going to talk. You know what this movie reminds me of? is It reminds me of a Quentin Tarantino movie, minus the dialogue. Yeah. If, you, if you added all of Tarantino's dialogue to this movie... It's a Tarantino movie. You know, it I don't. Been, yeah. I don't. I don't agree with that because, and I, I, I can't explain it any better than this. It's missing his ego. His ego. <laughs> You're not wrong there. Yeah. You, get, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Any I guess better the than flair that. that he would have added to it. Yeah, I could see that. It's I know missing what you're his saying. ego, and that's yeah. the only the only way I can explain it. And and but it's it's a welcome. Uh, it's a welcome, not there. In this, right? Yeah, I don't want it there because the toned downness in this adds the um, the focus where it should be. I like that driver don't say a lot. He don't he don't mm-hmm. talk a lot, and whenever he does, and I love one of the things that I love most about his character. The only time you see him smile is whenever he's he's looking at that girl, looking at Irene. Yeah, that's the only time in the movie he smiles. Mm-hmm. Well, him and the kid, her or and with the kid. The kid yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I love that, and and I didn't realize back when I watched this because this is pre Oscar Isaac hype, but Oscar Isaac is in this movie, and I'm like, dude, I fucking love this. I didn't even realize it was him yeah. until. So the one thing I love about Ryan Gosling is like nobody does under pressure like him. He's got the face for it. He's got that yeah, look. He can completely be under pressure. He can completely, but he's just. It's like a not not easily even, phased. Yeah, even keel. And I'll tell you, the first movie I've ever seen him in was Murder by Numbers with... Um, mm-hmm. Sandra Bullock. Yeah. yeah. And I remember the first time I watched that and seeing him in that I movie. I remember from Hercules. I never I never seen that. He was very young. <laughs> I just remember him in Murder by Numbers. It was the very first movie I ever saw him in. And I saw him in that movie, and I was like, that dude is ugly as fuck. He I was, too. Really and then, like, somewhere. later I saw him... In another movie, and I'm like, hello. And then I found out it was the same person. I'm like, nah, no, it ain't. How could it be? And I go back yeah. and watch Murder by Numbers. I'm like, he's still ugly in as certain fuck. So- like, in how, certain how scenes, <laughs> like there's a scene in this where he's like, like leaning against her doorway or something at, inside her apartment, 
and he has that look on his face like god damn i kind of want to fuck him right now <laughs> i mean i'm telling you like he like, is good damn. like he's he, a good looking but dude i'm telling you like, like in murder by numbers i thought he was ugly as fuck and he i was I, too I, yeah yeah yes because i know what you're talking you. about i was thinking like He's not attractive. He's got that, like, big-ass forehead and shit. And I wonder, like, part of it, though, is because I really hate assholes. I really hate people who are Could full be. of themselves. Yeah. And he was in that movie. Boy, yeah. he was so full of he himself. He was a swole fucking brat. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just... Ugh. Yeah. But mm-hmm. now it's like, looking at him, like, he's married to Eva Mendez, and... You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, dude, he, he's a good-looking dude. Yeah. Uh, Do you think he was a good-looking dude? The main guy? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, no not I can really. kind of get it because, like, guys like her age or whatever, I, they look like babies to me. So I'm They're sure like, that he looks like an old they man. They like baby her. jackasses. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Everybody here in this town is ugly. I live. Well, in this he's town. not in this town though. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Gosling's not in this town. <laughs> what? I, uh, I, it killed me that. The the husband, uh, what was his name? Standard. Who the fuck names our kid Standard? I know. I thought the joke was funny. Can I get the deluxe edition? <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Deluxe edition. But like, how how kind of ridiculous is it that a, a stranger knows how to handle your kid? That's uh, better and than you, you do. and you don't. You know yeah. that whole situation where he gets beat the fuck up, and a stranger has to come in and swoop in and handle the fucking situation. Mm-hmm how i think that it's Um, a product of him being a selfish prick for so many years and in and out of jail and prison and uh doing bad things obviously he was a selfish individual before all these events so it only shows the character yeah i'm just saying it it, yeah you're right it shows exactly the kind of person he is it's just it's so freaking um i don't know it's it's just it was one of those situations where you're sitting here and you're watching it and like I guess as a parent I'm like how do you look at yourself in the mirror like how do you yeah right just and I it, get it it ugh. seemed like he was actually trying yeah this time to be around, a decent he, yeah. person you know and he was like I owe this the money to these people and blah 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 you know yeah. and he didn't want to do it he even admitted he goes I don't want to do the job he said I'm not going to he yeah. literally flat out said I'm so, not going to you know but drivers like well you know he, he'll He's not helping him for him. He's helping him for the, the kid, girl, wife, the kid yeah. and the wife. I think if it wasn't been for Driver, he probably would not have done it. Exactly. Which, you know, I mean, that's the sad part about all this is that, you know, you do get the the idea that he was trying to turn around this time and he was trying to do the right thing. Right. You know, so you do see the father as like, you know, in that situation, you're like, man, I'd feel like such a piece of shit. But you're also seeing that and, he is trying yeah. to... And the sad you know. part is, is like Driver is such a good person. Yeah, there, that you're... whenever he got shot and died, he's like, "Oh fuck," you know what yeah. I mean? Like he gets out of the car and he's actually he he almost he almost is de- devastated by it. He's like, well, "Holy shit!" He broke his own rule, right? Getting out of the car. Did you notice he broke oh, his own rule? He car. got out of the car. He, he didn't immediately drive away. He almost you see in his face where he got out of the car and he's like, "What am I doing?" Like for a second, you know what I mean? He got out of the car and and he almost goes over to him. And it well, takes him a second to realize he's gone. Oh shit! Like, what am I doing? And I then got, he gets back yeah. in the car. He yep. broke his own rule. So there, that right there tells you that he's in it. Like he's in it emotionally. You're right. But you know, it kills me though because like the type of person that Driver is is kind of an enigma because the type of person that can, for example turn around in an elevator and stomp the shit out of somebody's face yeah, until it's and like not a, even yeah. blink can also have the kind of emotion that it would take to get that close to somebody that he was in love with his wife is an enigma. And I want to talk about that scene because in that scene, that scene says a lot without saying anything. Yes. So I wanted to talk about that too. So like obviously he knows the guy has a gun, blah, blah, blah. And he moves her to the back so he can fucking stomp, obviously, his this dude's face into, uh, well, into the next... Oblivion. Ob- into oblivion. And uh, in and, and doing so, like, but before he does that, he, he just lays a big-ass kiss on her. The most slowest motion of kiss ever, and then, like, compl- and then proceeds to stomp the shit out of this dude. 
and then and in doing that he knows that he's like this it's is over he's, he's like not... he's like i'm about to end this i have to end this and i have to let her go and he like steps her moves her back lays one on her because it's the only opportunity he's going to get to do it so he does it and then stomps the shit out of this guy and and she essentially moves out of the elevator but you also know that she also sees him in a different light now too. Exactly, yeah. and that's and what that's, and that's what yeah. it was. Was he? He just didn't want to. He's like, as soon as she sees this, it, yep. it's over with. Yep, she's gonna see me for this, yeah. and there's gonna never be. She's never gonna see me as anything else but this. Exactly. Right. Yep. Someone that could be, yeah, that that kind of vicious. She's never gonna see me as anything else I'm but a psycho. She even let him yeah. kiss her. Because well, she did. Her she, husband she, just died. But she didn't know anything destroyed. else. Other than he died, he gave her the very bare minimum of the information. Other than you know he was trying to help him, and that he died. I mean, like, but her husband just died. She didn't care about him anymore. If you didn't oh. gather that, I mean, they yeah. were as soon as she, as soon as he happy. got out, yeah, yeah. I mean, hell, they were dating. They were going on dates and stuff yeah. before he got out of prison. Yeah, I know that. That's something yeah. I put on here. Is that she's married wearing a ring when she grabs his hand in the car. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, and then part of me says that she. You know, why put a guy on a leash when you know you're waiting on your husband and introducing him to your child? Yeah. I like, don't think it was something that she intended, though, because it's definitely... Like, he, she didn't go out of her way to pursue him. He pursued her, and then it escalated into something else. And she had to... And I, in, in, all women are the same. They all are looking for um, that... Sort Fathering. of security, yeah, yeah. Well, so she saw the way he treated her son, treated her. He obviously wasn't a jailbird. He had a job, a good, yeah. you know, a job, two Found jobs actually, wrong. huh? He was just never caught, right? And but he, you know, she also, I think she saw it as you know, this guy could be something to build a life with. You know, that's and women are attracted to that. I think that it was um, sort of one of those deals where, like you said, she. Um, she didn't pursue him, and he knew perfectly well. She didn't lie. I mean, she said, "My husband, you know, he's in right. prison." She didn't. Right. She didn't hide anything. Yeah. He knew exactly the situation. So, I mean, there was no hidden. There was on either part. Right. right. Nobody was hiding anything. So both of them knew perfectly well. I mean, well. he had a problem with it, obviously, but at the same time, he was also like very understanding mm-hmm. gave her the space you know until they walked back into his life again well and i think he he honestly you know at this point in time okay they a they haven't been dating long enough for him to be like are you gonna fucking divorce him or what or b he they haven't been together long enough for him to pay for a divorce she certainly doesn't have the money you know so i mean like there's all kinds of elements here that you know the timing of this you know couldn't have been worse you know for any of this to happen so you know they're they're doomed from the beginning as soon as he they find out he's getting out of jail this whole love story is doomed yeah. from right. the from that from that yeah, time. it was all fine and good for the first third of the movie mm-hmm. you know but after that it's just it's downhill so yep. i thought he was gonna beat the shit out of that dude in the diner the one that walked up to him yeah. and said hey i got another job oh yeah i love that yeah. too he's like if you don't go to if you don't well, shut up right now i'm gonna kick your teeth out Kick, kick your teeth down the back of your throat. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Damn, Diner so got calm, serious. cool, and collected." Like I'm telling you, nobody does that. Like Ryan Gosling, nobody yeah, can does pull a really that. Good job. He's calm, a great cool, fucking and actor. He oh, really yeah. is for sure. Um, I didn't understand why Standard didn't run right out after Blanche. Like after she had the money, I didn't. He he's he's in there for like another three minutes. Yeah, I didn't yeah. understand that, that either. In the first robbery too. I didn't understand that either. I'm like, what's he? doing you know yeah. what i mean like why wouldn't he just walk out with her unless he was doing something where maybe he was tying them up or i mean yeah but there, it, I think it he was just, just staying back holding the gun making sure she got out with the money so that but way she got didn't... well out she was in the car for a good two yeah, minutes and why was she wearing heels i'm that's what i <laughs> why would you wear heels? i don't know Dude. that that bug that bugged me i just i don't know i know that scene in the hotel room where she goes into the bathroom and you see that dude outside there. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. But then she, like, her whole head just obliterates. Mm-hmm. You're right. like, Holy shit. Like, dude. oh, my God. You know, it's one of those deals where it's like, you know, you see him, see that out of the corner of his eye and immediately react, right? 
and I'm thinking to myself, like, what's his background? And then I immediately think, I don't want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Because, again, it's another one of those things, like, it's better that I don't. I don't want to know, because, like, whatever you're going to tell me is not nearly as cool as what I'm thinking. It's like, not what nearly I'm... as cool as just not knowing. Exactly. So exactly. that's one of them. And, and it's funny, because, like, we bitch about not enough gore. In this movie, it wasn't meant to have gore. But it had, but it had gore in all the right spots. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you're like they utilized it very well, you know. Like, and it was like that part where he like kicks that kicks that dude's head in in the elevator. Oh yeah. That was like utilized so well, and then you only see him kicking in his head for like a split second. It was supposed to be much worse. Was it? See, and I'm okay with that split second. You know what I mean? Watermelon. Just to give you that little shock. Mm -hmm. You know, it's same with the the shotgun to the head and and. Or even the part, honestly, whenever they... Took the shrapnel out of his arm? Huh? Took the shrapnel out of his arm from the, the shot... The shot well, gun. no, not so much that as much as, like, whenever he cuts Brian Cranston's arm open. Oh, oh yeah. And that yeah. tore me up. I was like, yeah. Jesus Christ. I was Christ. upset Shannon died. I knew he was going to, though. I remembered. But it was like... I didn't remember how he died, but I remember that he died. And I was still tore up. I was like, expecting... It's funny because all the people that you like, like Brian Cranston, you see him die and you're like, God damn. But then like the one person that you want to see really get fucked up, you don't see him die at all, uh, you, which is Ron Perlman's character. Yeah. But he, <laughs> I laughed. Okay. Like I laughed when he, he goes to get him. Yeah. Cause he started this whole fucking mess. He, he should really have gotten did. it worse. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, like he, he goes after him. Right. And Ron Perlman does this whole thing. Like. Like, he's going to run into the ocean. Like, where are you going? That's what I said. I was like, are you running? Where the fuck are you going? But that just shows his, his the intimidation factor Why would you run there. into the ocean? Yeah, I'm like, what are you going to do? Go swim with the sharks? <laughs> like, like, I mean, what are you doing? It's nighttime. Sharks are by the fucking beach. <laughs> like, I just want to understand. I'm like, why would you go towards the ocean? Like, you're better off trying to run around this, dude. You'd be... It, it, I yeah. thought that was funny. And then, yeah, just drowns, and then he water. just drowns his ass. Yeah. <laughs> Which I guess drowning is pretty awful. It is yeah. in your eyes. Ew. A lot of people say it's a peaceful way to go. Bullshit. I couldn't imagine. No, they say it's just as bad as being buried, burned alive. How? They say it's worse than being burned alive. Yeah. Okay, I'll believe that. I'll just take a bullet <laughs> to the face. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Just shoot me in the face. All right. I'd rather be shot in the heart. I no, because you your brain that. still your goes on still I don't for care. like another seven. If minutes. I have a funeral, I want them to see my face. They don't have to see my heart. No, I'm not going to have a funeral. It's just, it's a waste of money. Yeah, it wow. is. I, I just, just, just cremate me. Cremate me. Because Throw I'm telling you right now, somewhere. if you cremate me, then you know I'm dead. If I wake up in a box, I'm going to be so pissed. I'm going to come back and haunt every fucking one of you. That's it. I'm going to bury <laughs> you I will. Now. No, you're not. It's already in my will. I will talk to Jeremiah. It's already in my will. <laughs> I'm getting burned. Irene looks like a teenager. She does. She does, yeah. She, does. Like, she looks like a young. like a baby. Yeah. She does. She looks very young. Okay. But they do mention that she is young. 25. She was 17. She'd be 25, yeah. So. Yeah. Cuz the kid was 8. She was 17. I think it's her hair. When she had him. I think it was yeah, her hair maybe. that kind of did it. I've never seen two blonde people together before. Like in a relationship? Never seen Ooh. them married. It happens. Quite a bit. Mm. Uh. Them getting blonde people marrying each other? Oh, yeah. I've yeah. never seen blonde people together before. I've never seen two gingers together. I've never seen that either, no. Well, but at I the see, same time, uh, ginger with green eyes I got a, I got a signs buddy of incest, so, you whatever. know. I got a friend of mine that's married to another ginger. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> I live under a rock. Ron Perlman always plays such a badass, but like in real life, he's such a sweetheart. Yeah, he's always some asshole in a movie. <laughs> yeah, it's he just... always he always plays like this, you know, like Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, you know, he's always like some asshole, badass jerk. Yeah, but in real life, you know, like he he always did Hellboy at like children's hospitals, and like he always, you know, he did a lot of charities, and he's just a big teddy bear. I like, love Ron Perlman. Yes, I do. I love him to death. Man. Yes, I, I forgot he was in this movie, and I'm like, dude. I miss Ron Perlman. Where's he at? Right. What is he doing nowadays? Right. The last thing I saw him in was Don't Look Up, and it was a very small role. Yes. So, yeah. but I'm like, dude, where is he? That at, was a good man? movie too. By Here, the way, here's a question though too. Like, just walking around, the, he was just walking around with a bloodstained jacket. Like, 
Right? Yeah. Nobody, nobody's yeah. like, hey, uh, you might want to change. Yeah. It'd, be funny, it'd be funny. It'd be funny if somebody. It'd be funny if somebody did say something and he didn't even look at them. He just went nosebleed and kept walking. Nosebleed. <laughs> like, and it's clear down here, you know. Yeah. Nosebleed just keeps on walking. No, you just uh, no, you you've got red in you. <laughs> <laughs> you've got red, red on you. you. That's funny. Something. <laughs> If I saw his jacket, like, out in public, I wouldn't have even thought twice. Unless I smelled the blood on him, I would have thought it was just a design. Why do you smell like. so rusty? <laughs> <laughs> Why did she hit him, though? Like, I think it was I mean, out of... There's a lot of emotions that go through. You yeah, just lost somebody I think it was just out of pure emotion. You know he was part of it now. I don't know. I mean... And he I, took it, too. He's like, I deserve that. Yeah. <laughs> I know he did, but, like, I don't know. He knew it was coming. Yeah. He expected sure, he was okay sure. I know he did, but like I'm not talking about that. I'm I'm asking like from her perspective, wouldn't that have been kind of a blessing in disguise? Yeah, not but still though, I mean, really, I don't I think mean, that she's the type of person that's gonna wish ill on. No, anybody. I'm not saying she's wishing it. I'm just saying like you know, you don't have to hit the guy. You could have been like in your head like, oh, well, I'm she such could have fucking person. kicked him in the nuts instead, but she didn't do that. She just smacked why, him. In the face. Why did she have to hit him at all? Well, why like, why like did there I have said, to be any it, violence at all? I mean, all? think of it this way: you just she just lost somebody she loved. She didn't love him anymore. Mm. We've we've already established that. Yeah. They do have a child together, though. Sure. Yeah, she still and cares about that. him deeply. Yeah. Also, no, I, I get and that. She I'm knows just saying that too. There, there, also, there can always be like there's there's like the sadness, sure, but like. So, but what I'm saying is, she just lost him. The only thing I can't okay, I can get behind like being angry because maybe she blamed him for getting him killed to do it but the bottom line is like she can't really blame him because ultimately standard standards actions put them in that position right true yeah but at that point time, like, that, not, that's where i going to be thinking logically like that maybe i'm the only woman that does because i'm telling you like i because i don't like to apologize to people apologizing Ooh, if I have to apologize to somebody, like I'd rather get hit in the face. I'd rather get kicked in the shin repeatedly than apologize to somebody. Ask Crystal, I'm not very good at apologizing. I hate apologizing. (laughs) So before before I lose my shit on somebody, before I get angry and start yelling or hitting or, I think about everything. So I guess in this scenario, like when she hit him, I'm like, why? You know what I mean? Right. Because Standard was the one that put them in that position. Yeah. And yeah, he talked him into doing it, but Standard was the one that put them in that position. She didn't know that. Ultimately, though. yeah, she did. He was the one that was in prison. Standard is the husband. Yeah. yeah. Never mind then. I yeah. thought you were talking about the other. No, Standard. Standard was the one in prison. She knew that Standard owed people money. I mean, I think that uh, right. there's a lot of reasons why you know what I mean to argue why she would or would not have done it, but I think that it, it added to. I guess Eric probably Eric has the best response is that you know emotions run high. Yeah, yeah. I guess but it just. I but I know. will say that the scene where he walks into that strip club and smacks that dude's hand with a hammer. Yeah, that was fucking. <laughs> that awesome. was I was digging that. Yeah, that was great. And then all them naked bitches just sitting there like, oh my god, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they weren't even they almost were emotionless from it. I'm yeah, like, well, I mean they're in shock. I mean you see some guy just some randomly just walks in. And, him, though. Yeah. Like well, said, then like. The scene where uh, he, they're in the diner where it's Ron Perlman and the other dude. And oh, yeah. And he stabs the fuck And he just stabs the fuck out of this dude because you're like... And he's like, now you can clean up well, my mess. Well, the funny part is just like you wouldn't have you would have gotten it from this... Gotten that idea from this guy until this point. You're like, right. this guy seems like a pretty nice dude. Yeah, you, you and think that he's stabbing. kind of like... Uh, the voice of reason. The voice of reason and the money. The money yeah. guy. You just think that like, he's, he's kind of like, well, you know, I've got you know a little bit of faith in this partner. kid. Blah blah blah. Like, you know, maybe he's got a little bit of balls. Maybe he's not he's such not, a bad guy. You know, he's not going to be pushed around. You can tell he's not getting pushed around yeah. by Nino. But like, but whenever he whenever he straight stabs that fucking dude in the eye with that fork, and then goes over and just and yeah, kills now you his can ass, clean up my like, fucking you're mess. You're like, oh damn, this guy's like the he's real the deal. Balls. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so he, that guy was eating a burrito whenever. Like he got stabbed in the throat. Do you think he stabbed the burrito too? Probably. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you I mean, though. There's probably a couple refresh this... that came out with it. <laughs> Is that your phone? Uh huh. This was where I kind of got the idea that he was the big boss though. And I'll tell you, it, there was a couple things that kind of keyed me into that. Was the very first time you see him when he goes into the pizzeria, and Nino comes walking in, and he's like. 
why are you eating that chink food in my restaurant? Yeah. <laughs> and he just kind of rolls his eyes at him. And it's kind of like, hmm, okay, well, there's, there's one, right? Because it's like, if there was any kind of power play there, you would think that he wouldn't have made that move, you know? So there, that was clue one for me. That he was going to die? No, that the other guy was actually in charge, not Ron Perlman. Gotcha. And um, the other one was uh, when they were talking about the um, the racing and all of that, and they're out there in the garage, uh -huh. and um, Nino's talking all this smack to Shannon, and they're over in this corner, and they're talking, and Nino's just running his mouth. And the other guy walks over to Driver, and he's very calm, and he's talking to Driver, and, you know... He kind of makes very veiled threats, you know, like, hey, I used to make movies and, you know, there was this and there was that. And, you know, Shannon did this and Shannon did that. But, you know, if you do this, this is going to happen. And I was kind of like calm, cool, collected. And he's making veiled threats. This guy, I think, is in charge. And, yeah. Well, that, that was the, you my get that idea clue. because the first thing that Ron Perlman does is come in and start bashing the car and turns around. Now this is a pussy magnet. Yeah, like that, that's know? what I'm saying. I'm like, like the boisterous, yeah, okay. mouthy one. You know, like when he, that was my second clue. It was like when he walked in and started running his mouth like that. And then the other guy walks over here and starts talking to, to driver. You know, I was kind of like, yeah, I don't think you're in charge. Yeah, we know who the brains is apparently. Yeah. So I kind of already had that idea before that happened. But, you know, yes, that was like the moment where you're like, mm-hmm, yep. Yep. You are definitely not in charge. So the part at the very end when they get to... He finally meets up with them. Everybody else is dead, essentially, yeah, right. at this point, except for Driver and what's-his-face. And they meet up, and I'm like, okay, that part where he like pulls out the money and he stabs Driver, and Driver stabs him back, Like I think up until this point, I'm like, why? how did he let his guard down so simply? Just You know what I mean? Like, I don't think he did. I think, I think he knew exactly what was going to happen. And one of two things. Either A, he knew what was going to happen and he was okay with dying. Because of, you know, losing Irene and the kid and, like, he was just over it. Or he knew what was going to happen. I, either way, he knew what was going to happen. He knew what was going to happen. And, you know, he knew where to position himself so that it wouldn't kill him it wouldn't be fatal but you know he knew how to position himself but also he didn't want it to be one of those scenarios where the guy you know um didn't think that he was vulnerable like he wanted him to think he was vulnerable so that he could get him right yep you see what i'm saying i think it's the latter but i also think that the other one is plausible too I don't know that long extended scene with him sitting in the car. That was a little and he too doesn't long. blink. Yeah, I know. I was like, so is he dead? I, mean, I, I was like, I don't remember him dying. Yeah, I couldn't remember either. I'm like, fuck, did he die right here or? So like, whenever that scene, and then he finally blinked. I was like, okay. Yeah, I was like, yeah. in my head, I'm like, I don't remember him dying, so I don't think he and dies. I was wondering if they were setting this up for a sequel. Like, uh, Ryan Gosling has a strict no sequel rule. Does he? Well, a lot of people do until they do it. Yeah, Adam Sandler had the same fucking role until he did Grown Ups too. I'm just saying, so far he hasn't. So, hmm. well, I'm either not way, he never will. Just saying that he hasn't so far, and right. I don't think that he would yet. He's not to Adam Sandler's level of <laughs> yeah of I need work yet. No yeah, offense, I, well, Adam. I I could definitely see them doing. Have Adam you ever seen Rob the Gray Man? No, just have you seen the Gray he Man? Likes to take work jobs. The what? The Gray mm -hmm. Man on Netflix. It was an action thriller movie mm -hmm. with him in it. Mm -hmm. I, I could see him doing another one of those. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's I one of those espionage sort of movies where he's the baddest of the bad and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I could see him doing another one of them, like, if they paid him the right amount of money, I think. But I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't, Who yeah. the fuck knows? He seems to really kind of... He is the type of guy that kind of... He seems like sticks to his guns and... And does what he likes, the projects that he feels most passionate about. Why do you think he's never been in a Marvel movie? <laughs> yep. You know? So, he would make a great Marvel character, though. Oh, for sure. But he's the type of guy that's probably like, no, that's no. tasteless bullshit. You know? You know, I wondered for a second, like, why did Shannon shake his hand knowing damn well everything that was going on? 
but and I'm trying to get your guys' perspective because this is what I think what I think happened but you know in my mind I'm seeing I'm thinking to myself like why would you shake his hand you know he's out to kill you you know like you're trying to pack your shit and get out of there before he shows up like you know this is about to end blah 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 but I also think that Shannon had been dealing with these guys for so long that he kind of had deluded himself that they wouldn't hurt him I think that's where he stood too I think he just thought well he won't hurt me you know we've been doing this for so long together that why would he just up and kill me now yeah you know and because he was the one that called him in that about, right there you know, about solidified driver. how ruthless he actually is, yeah like he know? called he called him about driver and was like you know i just wanted them to know you were just trying to give them the money back and but you know and that driver didn't like that very much no but but driver knew them for what they were and right. shannon was deluded enough he literally mm-hmm. thought they were friends like that they were that they were people and they weren't like yep. so that's I still think the the even there at the end when he shook his hand he was still deluded enough that he thought that they weren't going to hurt him. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that I don't think he understood the 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 levity of the situation. So mm-hmm. yeah, or the fact that like he fucked up. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. So, is like I I, th- I think that that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, I think that's about all my notes. Yeah, we covered everything. I had. Uh, one other scene that I really thought was kind of funny was um, when he runs Ron Perlman off the road. Like, he runs him off the road, right? Oh, yeah. And he's like, what the fuck was that? So you're looking for a guy who drives. You know, he's, he's a driver. Right. And, and you, you get wrong. You road. got run off the road. And you go, what the fuck was that? Car. Driver. Run off the road. Two plus two is four. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know, so, like Ron Perl. Well, let's face it, Ron Perlman's character wasn't meant to be the smartest one. So, I know. so uh, no. that's fair. That's fair. I have one more note on mine. So, like the the after the first scene, where you know he did the driving and all that, cuts to the movie scene. Like he's on set. Oh At yeah. At first, I yeah. thought he was a cop. I was like, oh, so he's a dirty Me cop. Too. And then, <laughs> then it's like, oh, then I was like, yeah, you saw that. I was, I was like, like, oh, he's a cop. I said, he's a cop? Question mark. And then I was like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I, I do want to say though that mask was the freakiest thing in the whole movie. Oh, I agree. I loved it. I won't but win. actually, those are actual those are actual movie yeah, props know, that they that's use. The worst yeah. part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This they is use like those them to Im- immortal masks. They use them to so they yeah. they kind of look I like every one. man, mm-hmm. so you don't really notice, mm-hmm. you know. Sometimes you can notice them in the movies, though. Oh yeah, they're yeah, a oh, yeah. Bigger than... <laughs> Especially when you see movies like this and you you know what they look like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then, like now, every time you watch a movie, you're gonna be like, oh. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Now I now I definitely <laughs> now I know see what it. They, yeah, it's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, um, review time. Eric, hey, you're on a timer. 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 Eric, what's your review? All right. So my pros, I love the action and the drama. Was that dialogue worked for the movie? Um. Yeah. So cons, um, I didn't like the score. Fuck you. I didn't like the score. Sorry. It just wasn't my forte. <laughs> and some of the scenes just felt like it was a little dragged out. But overall, I still gave it an 8 out of 10. So. All right. Joseph. Uh, for me, um, I really liked... I liked the fact that there wasn't a lot of dialogue. I liked the fact that the actors could convey most of what needed to be said just through acting and and the looks on their faces their expressions um uh, i love brian cranston's character i love ron perlman's character i pretty much loved everybody's character in this movie because they all played a specific role that fed to the story even oscar isaac you know what i mean like i love oscar isaac he's such yeah. a, he's a great fucking actor yeah um the girl the kid and then especially Ryan Gosling, man. Like, just the way he he only smiles whenever it comes to the kid and the woman. Uh, the look on his face. Because he's always so straight-faced until those two are in the scene. 
that's the only time you see him with any kind of any real inflection, emotion. any emotion. Yeah, any emotion. So I think that's great, and I just, I, man, they use gore so well in this movie in in just the right spots, and you know it's not oversaturated with it. It's kind of like just sprinkled in there. Yeah. Uh, the the soundtrack is awesome. It really fits what I think they were going for for this movie. Um, most of the cinematography is really good. I think it's really well done. Um, but the biggest thing for me is I feel like some of the scenes could have been done. Uh, I feel like they could use better backdrops, I guess, for some of the scenes. It just because some of the backdrops were kind of just bland. They're like, oh, this just looks like any city. You know what I mean? And like it looked like it could be downtown Detroit or you know what I mean? Like just anywhere. It was so that bothered me. Though. It was kind of like just a gray setting. It wasn't nothing fancy, you know what I mean? Like this is where they said you should have used more oversaturation in certain areas of the movie. I think it would have if it was oversaturated like we just watched Knock at the Cabin. If they would have used that, oh my god, this movie would have been gorgeous. It'd probably be a nine out of ten. I think they did well with the night scenes. Yeah. Oh yeah, for yeah. Sure. I think they did well that. with the night scenes. Yeah. But like the daytime scenes and stuff, just kind of like they're like, they're eh. boring. it's almost like they went with that sepia tone. Kind of, the yeah. And then it, it just seems like, you know, like they like the scene with at the very end scene where he's given well that the outdoor the morning, daytime scene. Yeah, I'm like I they could have shot that in a subway parking lot for all we know. You know what I mean? <laughs> just anywhere. So it's just I was kind of like, I was just bored with it, kind of a little bit with that. But other than that, the whole movie overall is great, and I'm going to go with Eric. I think it's an 8 out of 10 for me. I think it's a great movie. Okay. Yeah. So. How about you, Madison? I thought it was a great movie, too. Mm -hmm. um, I did like the uh, nighttime scenes, and I did love the soundtracks for it. They had really good music. Um, I did love the acting. Little boy. I can't remember what he did, but he made me laugh internally. I really like that when he said uh, he's a bad guy and he's like, how can you tell? And he's like, he's a shark. He's a shark. <laughs> I like that scene. Yeah. I don't really know how to explain how I like movies. I just like some movies and I don't like some movies. Yeah. But Go from the gut. You don't have to. I'm not really a big fan of action movies, but I like this one. I think this one works because it does. it's action, but there's more story. Mm -hmm. The action just plays out when it has to. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I'll give this one a seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Well, for me, um, again, soundtrack. I love the soundtrack. I think it fits the movie. Uh, it helps to build a certain mood for the movie. Uh, the cinematography, especially for the night scenes, I think it pushes that same mood as the um, soundtrack does. Uh, I'll go with you a little bit on the daytime scenes. I think that they could have done better with the saturation, and especially for the outdoor scenes, I feel like they used like sort of the sepia tone that works a little better for um, movies that are like you know like those apocalypse movies where they've got like this um, you know sandy or you know uh, desert feel or whatever. And I don't know, it just it those were kind of off for me a little bit, but. Um, Overall, the cinematography was good. Uh, the acting, acting was amazing. Uh, it didn't matter who was on screen. They all did wonderful. Even the kid. I mean, the kid, the thing I liked about the kid um, was that he did sort of the same thing as, as Ryan Gosling. He didn't have a lot of talking that he had to do, but he conveyed a lot just from his looks looking at his you. Or, or, you know, when he hands him that bullet... You know, like that scene right there between the two of them with so little that dialogue. That was a huge tonal shift in the movie. Yeah, yeah, was. and and just that, just the the exchange between the two of them with almost no dialogue at all between that child and that adult was amazing to me. That that scene alone was great. Um, but you know, there there's so many other scenes that were amazing as well. Uh, but uh, you know, I could go on and on about the things I really liked. There's not a lot of things I can say that I didn't like, so I'll I have to go with you guys, and I'm gonna say like an eight, eight out of ten. Sweet. Battery. Okay. Um. So, yeah, that's where we are on reviews. So pretty close for everybody. Eight, 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 seven. 
It's not bad. That's pretty nope. good. So for Rotten Tomatoes, um, what do you guys think the critics did? Seventy five. All right. Seventy five. Forty. I think it's way higher than that. Where are you at? Yeah, probably yeah, the critics. Yeah. But I want to think it's in the nineties. Because I know whenever this movie came out, it was it was very very positive and people really received it well. And I think that. Even now, I think it's still a cult hit the for people. The critics? Mm-hmm. Yeah, critics. I think it's low 90s. I'm going to go... But it might not be. You say 90, you're still closer than the I, think, I need a number, man. Uh, fuck it. Uh, 92... Oh, this is coming down to the wire. Now she has to do math in her head. <sighs> what do I? I got to do math for Joseph. Got it. Oh. Damn what? near on the nose. Ninety three. Ninety three percent. Told you, low nineties. <laughs> when you said shit. low nineties, I'm like, come on, get. I, I wanted to. Get I don't it, think like, any of us nose. has gotten the score on the nose yet. No, no. I did that one time. There did was you? one that was like ninety six or something. Oh, it was one. Of, yeah, I don't remember <laughs> which one it was though. Um, what about the audience? Where are you guys at with the audience? I think the audience is still going to be high, um, too. I don't think it's going to be as high as critics, though. 88. Oh. Ha-ha. <laughs> He's like, you I'll bastard. I was going to say 87. <laughs> I'm going to stick with my 90. I'm going to go 90. Mm. Now I do have to do math. <laughs> Where's 79% at? You guys do the math for me, because that's what it is. It's 79%? Who had the other score? What was the other? She score? had eighty-seven. 87. I had eighty-nine. If it was seventy-nine, she, she eighty-eight. Got, yeah, eighty-eight. Eight, and nine. Then she was. So she, 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 had, she, so she got, got it. it. Good job. Oh, so so it's actually a lot lower, huh? Yeah, I guess so. I, I guess I could that. see how this could be a critical darling, and this would be the audience. You know, just audience kind of was like, it. eh. Uh, I, I think it's probably the. I'll be honest. I don't really get that. The low dialogue. The. Because I I hated it the first time and that's true well, i didn't hate it the first time i just was kind of that was lame yeah. i don't know like i said probably a little dialogue for a lot of audience people were probably not feeling it yeah a lot of dumb right. people don't get low, <laughs> low dialogue i don't need dialogue to propel the story i think Based it's better when it doesn't dialogue. need i think it's better when it doesn't need yeah. the dialogue with its hyper stylized blend of violence music and striking imagery drive represents a fully realized vision of art house action that's the critics consensus no just no three out of ten this is an awful movie perhaps all the more so because there were the ever so slight hints that it might have been good watch the first half hour gosling's unnamed character when spoken to takes ridiculously long pauses no upwards of 10 seconds to respond Okay. That all right. Uh, to be like one that. out of ten. The very definition of dreadful. Seriously, there are times when I just don't get the sight. I get that people have different tastes in movies, but this movie has a ridiculously high rating. To be perfectly blunt about it, it's dreadful. If you look up the word dreadful in the dictionary, I'm sure there will be some reference to drive in the definition. Oh, this is the same. How kind clever of, of you to right. say it like that. It takes almost half the movie before we really get a sense of where this is going and even then it doesn't become very interesting. It's ridiculously and often graphically bloody and makes terrible use of bad music to try to build suspense. <laughs> Ryan Gosling is the star of this. <laughs> Eric's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Shut I up, Eric. Like, I agree with <laughs> that. I can get behind that part. <laughs> Shut up, Eric. Ryan Gosling Drip is the, the star music. of this. He plays a Hollywood stunt driver who also moonlights as a driver for more than a few shady characters one thing i have discovered over the years is that people get caught up in the hype about a movie and when it turns out to be dreadful they can't admit that they got caught up in the hype so rather than calling it a good movie it becomes an artistic masterpiece or some such thing that's probably wow. why i hated it to begin with is because everyone's like oh the movie's so good man trying to come up with yeah like artistically it's such a good movie you know that might like, have been it because both you and i have yeah, the same attitude we as, get like they're that like shit. they're like oh it was this and it was that. Yeah. No, it was a fucking movie about a guy who drives a car. And that's like, why none of us yeah. liked Infinity Pool. Because we're like, yeah. I don't fucking like this movie because I, I, w- I didn't want an artistic masterpiece. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm still not going to like that movie. I was going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb and say in like 10 years, I'm still not going to like it. No, no, for yeah. sure. I'm still not going to like that movie. Uh, fucking psychedelic, artsy bullshit. Until 10 years from now, I'm no, like, I don't know, really. dude. Just try rewatching it once. <laughs> you might feel no. differently. I don't think I will. No. 
Uh, the rest of these are really long, like so I'm not going to read yeah. them. They're, like, stupid long. All right. But, yeah. Most people are just stupid about this, I guess. It's like rewatching that yeah. Megan R-rated version. I'm not going to do nope, it. it's up now. Rotten Tomatoes is. Yes, it seriously? Oh, it's because we're, we're done. Son of a bitch. You don't have to read it. <laughs> no. I'm sure you got trivia, don't you? Yeah, I do. It's like, oh, they're done. Put it back up so other people can read. <laughs> All right. So here's here's a... You got some trivia? I got some trivia. Sweet ass trivia with Karen. Okay. So trivia for Drive. In preparation for his role, Ryan Gosling restored the 1973 Chevy Malibu that his character uses in the film. I do like that Malibu. I do too. Sweet. Despite the driving storyline, director uh, Nicholas Winding Refn has no interest in cars. He doesn't have a driver's license and has failed his driver's license eight times. Oh my god. Who? <laughs> the, the director. The director. <laughs> <laughs> Failed his driver's license eight times. Oh eight like Grandpa. times. Grandpa never had got his license. You remember that? No, but this guy directed a movie about like, <laughs> oh, yeah. called Drive. Directed movies about cars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, Ryan Gosling replaced Hugh Jackman in this film. I had no idea that anybody else was even. Hugh I didn't either. Hugh Jackman. Huh? Hugh Jackman. That's, I don't know. I don't I, think so. He can't. I don't. Uh, I don't think it would pull the same weight. No. As it did with Ryan Gosling. No. I think it still would have worked and it still would have been a fine movie, but Ryan Gosling made it work in a different way oh, yeah. because of his facial expressions and things like that. I think uh, Hugh Jackman can pull um, calm and collected. But, but he doesn't not... have the face like Ryan, that intense no. look on his face like no. Ryan Gosling. Who's Hugh Jackman? Uh, Wolverine. Uh, Wolverine. Wolverine. I was going to say, oh, okay, they should have yeah. casted him, but he had to have his claws out while he was driving. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> After Ryan Gosling and uh, Nicholas Winding Refn removed much of Driver's dialogue, this is what we're talking about, Brian, Cross, Brian Cranston felt that his character Shannon should make up for the lack of talking in the film and thus made Shannon a motor mouth. Much of the dialogue was improvised. The driver and Irene actually say very little to each other, primarily because Ryan Gosling and Carrie Mulligan felt that their scenes should be more focused on the mood and refused to say many of the scripted lines. Mulligan responded, making or summarized making the film uh, as a as staring longingly at Ryan Gosling for hours each day. I'm sure she just did that anyway, though. It's I mean, Ryan I would, yeah. I would. <laughs> Albert Brooks was in character when he met Nicholas Winding Refn, pinning him against a wall and speaking in a threatening manner. Brooks shaved his eyebrows for his role to make his character more emotionless. I didn't even notice that, that the dude didn't have eyebrows. I did notice that because I'm like, because he's, he's, he's fucking, he's in Little Nemo or Finding Nemo. Yeah, but I didn't even notice he didn't have eyebrows. I've seen him before. I've seen him in other movies and stuff. That's why I was like, why does he look so weird? And I, I always, it's always the eyebrows. I didn't me. even notice. I've I seen did. him in other stuff. I'd never noticed seeing him in eyebrows in this yeah. movie. Uh, Brian Cranston was one of the first actors. Uh, I'm not going to keep saying his name. The director looked cast as he was a fan of Breaking Bad. Knowing Cranston had other opportunities, uh, Winning Ruffin tried to interest him by asking how he would like to develop the role. After not hearing back, uh, the director called him at the very same time that Cranston was writing on a piece of paper the pros and cons of doing the film. Uh, moved by the interest, he accepted the part. The opening chase scene was primarily filmed by the director within the car's interior. In an interview, uh, the director revealed the idea for the scene was to emulate the feeling of a diver in an ocean of sharks, never leaving the vehicle during a car chase so that the audience can see what's happening from the character's point of view. Tied on money and time, he shot the scene in two days with two different setups prepared in the car. The director found it difficult to have mobility with the camera, so he would then switch the camera to two additional setups nearby. As downtown Los Angeles had changed for the better, uh, Refn avoided certain areas to preserve the, preserve the gloomy atmosphere. Additionally, the scene was shot at low angles with minimum light. So they literally had to go to the, the bad areas of L.A. to like shoot because some areas had gotten better. <laughs> That's fucking weird to say about L.A. too, because right? it's a fairly shitty city. Right. Uh, Ron Perlman won the role of Nino after explaining to Nicholas Winding Ruffin that he wanted to play a Jewish man because the Jewish man who wants to be an Italian gangster because that's what he is, a Jewish boy from New York. I didn't even know that Ron Perlman was Jewish because mm -hmm. he doesn't look Jewish at all or act Jewish for that matter because he's just a big hulking dude that like has this big mouth and this like very large face yeah you know he doesn't look jewish to me he looks 
I mean, I wouldn't say he looks Italian, but he definitely looks like he could come from the Bronx. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. He's definitely, he looks like a New Yorker. Yeah. Yeah. In an interview for this film, Ryan Gosling stated that he always wanted to act out a superhero role, but the good ones were taken. The driver character is something of a superhero with the scorpion jacket as a costume. Gosling later turned down the role of the Joker and the Suicide Squad due to his no sequel role. The unusual way Ryan Gosling drives Ryan Gosling's driver holds the steering wheel with the thumbs crooked over the outside rather than hooked inside in a more normal grip is actually the common way stunt drivers hold the wheel to avoid broken thumbs during vehicle impacts. Why don't we all just hold our thumbs like that? Do you plan on hitting something? I mean, no, (laughs) but it's always a possibility for something to hit you. It's kind of one of those professional uh, things. You know, a lot of professions have secrets of the trade. I would imagine (coughs) it's one of them. You know, like, boxers have certain ways that they hold their fists so that they don't break certain fingers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, like, when I'm fighting somebody, I don't think about how I'm holding my fingers. I just Mm -hmm. punch them. Punch them, I mean, so, (laughs) I don't know. Although many stunt drivers are credited, Ryan Gosling did a number of stunts himself. Kind of like how porn stars bleach their buttholes. (laughs) It's like a, it's like a inside. You know people tattoo their buttholes now? Like, to the color that they want? That is so. Can you imagine how itchy that would be when it starts painful? to like? Could you imagine how itchy? Could you it imagine would be, though, sitting like, through that tattoo session? But how oh. itchy that would be. Could you imagine being the tattoo artist? Somebody comes in and says, "Oh, what if hey, they farted when they were doing it?" Can you tattoo my <laughs> butthole? There'd be I've, like I've heard of p- people that'll get a tattoo of an octopus that comes out of their ass. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that is yeah. awesome because like but, but, when they spread their cheeks, it's like. The, the octopus's mouth or whatever. But like, seriously, yeah. like, okay. But number one, like, when you got to go poo, right? Well, it's, like, you're, you're healing. Ink, you're inking. And then, and then. You're inking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, when it, it would be so itchy, like, when it's yeah. healing. Yeah. Not to mention, that. like, I bet that's a pain in the ass to keep. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say to keep it clean, but yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah. even realize that was a punch. Could you imagine, like, it. you have to hold open your ass, honey? Honey, Honey, can you can you rub that A&D on here? Yeah, can you rub the A&D on my butthole? (laughs) Get the Dia It's being a real pain in the ass. (laughs) Oh, God. Okay, anyway. Although many stunt drivers are credited, Ryan Gosling did a number of stunts himself after completing a stunt driving crash course. Uh, Consistent with the drivings, with the director's uh, usual visual style, wide-angle lenses were heavily used by cinematographer Newton Thomas Sigel. Handheld camera work was avoided, preferring to keep the film more grounded and authentic. He also avoided use of computer-generated imagery, and the inability to afford CGI due to budgeting restrictions also played a factor in this decision. Best decision ever. A Drive was the inspiration for the incredible indie popular popular indie game Hotline Miami, uh, according to its creator Jonathan Soderstrom. Brian Cranston had previously guest starred in a 1998 episode of The X-Files called Drive. This was his first collaboration with screenwriter Vince Gilligan, who, impressed by his performance as a sympathetic villain in this episode, would later cast him as Walter White on Breaking Bad, which ultimately led to him being cast in Drive. So there was kind of like a full circle there. I thought that was neat. According to the director, the film's romance was partially inspired by the films of John Hughes. Producers Mark Platt and Adam Siegel of Mark Platt Productions optioned the novel after Siegel read a review in Publishers Weekly. The driver intrigued Siegel because he was the kind of character you rarely see anymore. He was a man with a purpose. He was very good at one thing, and he made no apologies for it. The character interested Platt because he reminded him of the movie heroes that he looked up to as a child, characters typically portrayed by Steve McQueen or Clint Eastwood. When Gosling signed on for the lead role, he was allowed to choose the director, which was a first in his career. The actor chose Danish filmmaker Nicholas Winding Refn, whose work he admired. He said it had to be him, and there was no other choice. The director's inspiration came partly from reading Grimm's fairy tales, and his goal was to make a fairy tale that took Los Angeles as the background. With the driver as the hero, to play the common theme of fairy tales, the driver protects what is good, while at the same time killing degenerate people in violent ways. For his role in this film, Ryan Gosling chose to always have a toothpick in his mouth as a tribute to his father, who always had some kind of stick in his mouth. This some is kind a of dick in his mouth. Stick. <laughs> oh, Jesus sorry, I misinterpreted Christ. that. I'm pretty sure you said dick, but hey, stick. Whatever you think. I knew you would say. You something. can rewind it and find out. 
I can't rewind it. It's live. When when you go through it. It's recording. I will. We, and you know what? I'm going to message you and be like, told you, you said, said dick. No, I totally said stick. <laughs> Included among the 1001 movies you should see <laughs> before you die. Out. Edited by You're Steven edited Schneider. Out. He's probably going to edit it because he's a dick. No, I'm going to. I'm going to. Right there. I'm going to sample it that. in. That says you can dick. that. Right yeah, there, exactly. she's gonna just sample saying. it. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna edit it so that it does sound like. Because I just, because I just, just said dick, dick so, so he's gonna go back that, and edit it. it. So no, it's it not even gonna be your like... voice. It's gonna be me saying dick <laughs> over your voice. He's just gonna do it badly, just so, yeah. yeah. That's funnier. Although this is a, a quiet crime voice. thriller, the trailers gave the impression that it was a car chase film, like the Fast and Furious films. One woman even sued because she did not get that sort of film. Wow. How what? can you sue you for that? I got an idea for when you do that. Do you use Paul Rudd's Diok? Diok? What a Karen. <laughs> right? What a Karen. While watching a cartoon, Benicio <laughs> assumes one of the characters is a villain because he's a shark, to which driver replies, are there no friendly sharks? In Finding Nemo, Albert Brooks, who plays Bernie in this movie, voiced a fish, Marlin, who encounters a vicious-looking shark that and actually Bruce. turns out to be quite friendly. Bruce. Throughout this film, Albert Brooks plays against his usual role, which he was always typecast to play. He was always neurotic, wimpy, unlucky, an excessive complainer, and cannot get what he wants in life. Throughout the film, he portrays confidence, a man to be respected and feared, one who has a sense of control over his life and violent when pushed. Driver references the fable of the scorpion and the frog. A frog carries, agrees to carry a scorpion across the river if the scorpion promises not to sting the frog. The scorpion does promise, but halfway across the river, he stings the frog anyway, saying, it's my nature, and they both drown. Driver can be seen as the frog in this story. He drives, carries criminals, um, the scorpions, around in his car, but he is inevitably dragged into their destructive world, stung, leading to everybody's downfall. Driver's jacket has a scorpion on the back, just as the frog carried the scorpion on his back in the fable. Brian Cranston was the one who suggested the way his character will die, the specific way the wrist will be cut, um, during a reading with the director. As Ryan Gosling's character walks into the trailer to make the bald headed, uh, or to get the bald headed mask, three makeup heads um, or sculpts of Christina Hendricks's uh, head that they used for the shot oh, yeah. uh, can be seen in the background. I, thought, I was wondering what that was because I saw him there. Mm -hmm. According to the director, the head stomp scene was severely edited because the ratings board thought it was too violent. The it director kind of was. It was pretty, it was pretty violent. violent. Yeah, it, well, it, that's what I'm saying. It, it was supposed to be worse. What? No, it wasn't. What I thought mean? it was fine. It, it was supposed to be worse. It was supposed to be more violent. That's what I'm saying. It was supposed to be worse. Okay. Like it, it was worse than The Walking Dead. Yeah, but those are zombies, though. So? Yeah, that's a difference. They <laughs> stomped in. No, -uh, because Rick stomped that one guy in that one time. No, I don't know. Baseball bat. He did. He got really angry. Yeah, and um, Negan... It's an R-rated movie brain. anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't understand how much worse could it be. NC-17? I don't know. No, I don't, it's Even not near Darryl's that violent. <laughs> bash somebody's brains in, like a living person. I don't know. The director reportedly filmed a scene where the driver actually dies after he and Bernie stab each other. It was said to be used during an early test screening and didn't do well. I wouldn't have agreed. I, th I don't think I would have liked it as much either. I don't think I would I think either. that him living and going on, sailing off into the... Driving off into the sunset by himself was a good conclusion. Well, it was the comeuppance for the, the scorpions. Right, I mean, exactly. The, the fable, if you go with the fable, I mean, those assholes deserve to die, and he's sort of their... He's the justice. Exactly, should, and I agree with that. I think that. I don't think that he should have died, so no. I think that's a good ending. One of the first drafts of the script had a completely different second half than the final movie. After the part where the driver talks with Irene after his meeting with Cook, uh, where he realizes the real motives behind the robbery the he did with Standard, the driver takes Irene out to make her feel better. She then gets killed by a hitman who was actually sent by Nino to kill the driver, who then chases him in his Impala and eventually crashes into the hitman's car, only managing to kill the hitman's driver. While he escapes later in the script, the driver manages to find him and kill him with razor wire. The driver's character also had some more scenes in this draft focusing on him and his problem of losing control and having rage attacks. At one point, after an egotistic stuntman starts messing with him during the filming of a very difficult chase scene, the driver crashes the stuntman off the road and ends up beating him so badly he breaks the stuntman's jaw. 
The ending of this draft was also different. After killing the, the hitman who killed Irene, the driver sneaks into Nino's beach house and kills all of his bodyguards and drowns him. And after killing Bernie Rose in the same way that he kills him in the movie, a heavily wounded driver decides to leave Los Angeles in order to protect Irene's son and Benicio and his old friend Shannon, who, unlike in the movie, is not killed in this earlier draft, um, will or finds uh, Benicio and helps him, or takes him to a ranch far away from Los Angeles and raises him. I think I... I that's an okay sounding movie, but I think the issue with that is you don't get... I don't, like, one, I don't like the rage thing. That's what I was going to say. I don't yeah. like the rage attack thing. I don't thing. like the rage attack thing. I like the fact that he was Ryan calm. Gosling's character was calm and collected. Because mm -hmm. that, that made him smarter. Because mm -hmm. he was always calm and he was always... Hey, he walked in with that hammer and was just yeah. like, bam! Didn't even he care. was always calm and collected mm -hmm. and emotionless. And I like that. Yep. Like, I guess the rest of the movie, like, as that, like with that storyline, would have been okay. I like, um, I like how the, I like different. how the movie would, just turned I out. I would have liked to have seen it. Yeah, so I would have liked to have seen it, but compare I think two. in contrast, it, it wouldn't cut. have worked as well. Because killing off Irene I like would, would drag Shannon too much lived. bullshit. Exactly. I like that. And I like the idea of Shannon getting his, you know, s surrogate son. You know what I mean? Like someone he can, he can, he can raise, you know, as his own. Yeah. And that would be really cool because those are the, honestly two of the people in the movie who you can relate with and... Uh, feel the most bad for her, along with the mother, of course. Yeah. But in that draft, she died, so... Yeah. And I know. mean, you can't feel too sorry for Shannon, because he wasn't all, all the way innocent. Right, I understand. But... In that draft, though, he might have been. He might have been, yeah. So he might have been written a little bit... Yeah, he might have been different. Bit, a bit of a different character. Yeah, he might have been. So... But yeah, I, I, I didn't like the rage attack thing. That That is a complete no-no. Yeah, I, I didn't like, like that. I don't, I don't like that at all. Like, if they... That and the ending where he goes in, sneaks, gets in, and kills all of his men, and then kills, drowns him. That just sounds like the end of a Punisher movie or something. Yeah, you know? I like that he there that he did not kill very many people. That his his attacks, so to speak, or his his um, are thought out. They're yeah yeah. When he goes after somebody or whatever, he he doesn't kill unless he has to or he doesn't it's methodic yeah he's he's going in you know he goes in there with a hammer smashes dude's hand because he wants information he didn't kill him. you know yeah. the only reason he killed the guy in the elevator is because he'd seen irene he knew where she lived you know like he knew that guy was going to take information back like there was no choice there yeah he had to kill nino and he had to kill you know what i mean like yeah i don't agree i agree with you though that like no rage outburst like no. that just they do that in too many movies for one like it's overdone Oh, the hero's got a rage problem that he, you know, that's his, uh, his arc is, uh, he gets, he figures out how to control his rage and no, fuck that. Yeah. I'm tired of seeing that. Yeah. You know, if you watch Ninja Show me Turtles a guy enough, that knows how to deal with it already. If you watch like, enough, that's Raphael's arc in every fucking movie. <laughs> yes. Every movie is him getting over his rage problems. Yeah. And in the next movie, he's got rage problems again. <laughs> so... That's how it is in every episode, too. Yeah, yeah. like I, I'm over it, dude. Like I don't need to see a bunch of heroes with rage issues because they're only five seconds away from just being bad guys. It's way more mm -hmm. interesting that he can keep his composure. Yeah, yeah. Way more interesting because that that gives you a character worth watching. That makes more interest. It makes for a more interesting watch and to see his character throughout throughout the movie and interact. Like that's way more interesting than this guy who's just got anger issues. Yeah. You know, I don't want to see that. I don't care about that. Yeah. If I want to see that, I'll go back to getting smacked around by my dad, you know? <laughs> yeah. That never happened. That's not true. I didn't get smacked <laughs> around by my dad. <laughs> yeah, that's really where I'm at with it, too. But, yeah. So, who's up next week? Eric! All right, so you got to pull something. All right, pulled something in my back. <laughs> <laughs> Broke a hip. He's old. What you got? What you got? Well, I've got two. I'm trying to drop one. We only do one movie a week, man. I know. <laughs> yeah, please, God. We did We did two one time. That was rough. Yeah, our first episode. I know. <laughs> Annihilation. Annihilation. Oh, boy. That's that Natalie Portman. Ash, a Oscar Isaac is also in this. Uh, that does not ring any bells with me. No, it's on I'm, Netflix. It's on Netflix? It is on Netflix, I believe. Annihilation. A biologist signs up for a dangerous secret expedition into a mysterious zone where the laws of nature don't apply. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. 
Okay. How old is the movie? Um, uh, just a few years old. I think I might have seen it. I maybe. got Paramount Plus, Roku, Freebie. Oh, maybe it's not a Netflix movie then. I thought it was exclusively on Netflix. No, it's, I got Paramount Plus, Roku, and Freebie is where it's streaming. Roku and Freebie are both free, and then Paramount Plus, of course, is Paramount I Plus. Yeah, so that's where it's at. Paramount Plus. So there's your synopsis, because I had no clue what we were talking about. Uh, 2018. I have never seen this movie. I saw the first 20 minutes of this movie and turned it off because I just, I don't know if I wasn't in the mood for it or not, in the, but it's a horror movie. Oh. And it's on the vein of, what do they compare this movie to? Apparently it's a really good fucking movie though. Yeah. I I've have never not, seen her in a, in a horror movie, Natalie. Portman. It's not your typical horror movie where it's like really dark. It's actually a really colorful movie. And so I'm getting the this sense that it's sort of like one of those horror movies that are, uh, well, maybe not. This zone, okay. So this zone that they're talking about is an area where uh, I don't know if it's an oh, extraterrestrial. Oh, hey, Jennifer Jason Leigh's on this too. Yeah. Yeah, she is actually. Um, so, but like this area is like infested with like an alien form of, of some kind that's evolving these this plant life and these animals in it. So it gets very colorful it's and also like very evolution. graphic, huh? Yeah, like but evolution. not funny. Yeah, but not funny oh. exactly. Huh. So like it, it looks really cool, evolution. and I've heard Stop a lot of good things because you are embarrassing. <laughs> evolution <to> recast. <laughs> <laughs> So it'll it'll be an interesting one I think to to watch. Especially yeah, since I've, I've, I've never, never actually I've never seen it. even heard of it. Honestly, it came out. <laughs> when did it come out? Uh, 2018. 2018. So I yeah, it's that. a few years old. Yeah. Um, I think you'll like this one more than anybody though, Karen. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Never even heard of it. I'm I'm surprised Jeremiah hadn't already watched it. You guys hadn't already. He seen it. He may have. I don't know. I don't. I don't. And, I think once you actually see the trailer or something, you know, you'll it'll be, be like, funny. Oh, yeah, I remember. It'll be funny if I have like seen this because that's happened to me before. But like, I don't know this fucking movie. And I'll yeah. sit down and be like, no, I feel like this I've is one. This. I don't, either you have one seen it times. and you don't remember, or you haven't seen it, but you were like, I need to watch that. Mm. It's one of those situations. I don't know. You know. We'll give it a shot. Yeah. Anyway, next week, Annihilation and Eric's hosting. So it's him. I'll it's try Eric. to do better this time. You'll do better. <laughs> I'll do better. I'll do better, <laughs> Daddy. You actually hear me talk more <laughs> next week. <laughs> yeah, he'll have to talk. He'll have to talk. And next then the week. week after that, Madison will host. Are you ready? No, oh, she'll be all not right. Not right now. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. We'll we'll keep the the notes up for you. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep them up for a while. She barely spoke during this episode. Did too. I spoke. She spoke. I she used spoke. Words. I used words. Shut she up. used her big girl words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big girl, daddy. <laughs> I'm a big kid now. <laughs> so next week, annihilation and Eric's up, and that's it. Okay, bye. Bye. Oh, bye. Bye.